I made my way down to Copa over in Essex. Yeah, buddy. Guys, take a look at that mess. There are tons of missing and broken modules. This is the ODB diagnostic port. Heard yeah, something. Engine. Yes guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the Christmas special. And like the thumbnail says, we've got a bona fide supercar coming on the channel today. This is not a clip bait. I'm about to jump into this lovely car, a 2008 VW Golf, which you could win. The raffle went live in the last episode. Head on over to raffle.com forward slash salvage nation. Get yourself some tickets and you could be driving off in this. But guys, the car that I'm picking up today is not my first attempt to get my hands on a supercar. About about two weeks ago, I had a very interesting run-in with Cole Park and another supercar that I was gonna get for the channel. Check this out, it's very interesting. Guys, hold on, I've gotta pause the video here because I need to tell you about today's sponsor's car vertical. As you can see, this is my first supercar and it costs a hell of a lot of money. And to protect that investment, I made sure I did a vehicle history check with car vertical. I can't prompt you guys enough. If you're ever buying any vehicle, always do a vehicle history check so you're not caught out. And car vertical are the ones that I turn to. They've changed the game. You can check the mileage history, the MOT history, you can check if the car has been stolen in over 50 countries, you can check if the car has ever been written off and if it's been written off, Car Vertical even shows you the pictures of all the damage so that you can make an informed decision and I made sure I did a history check on this car and once I found that information from Car Vertical, I knew that this car was the car for me. Make sure that you check out Car Vertical if you're going to buy any used car or even if you've got a new build coming in from an auction website, wherever you're getting your cars, click the link down below, use the discount code and you'll receive 10% off the price of each check. Trust me, it's better to pay this money now than to buy a ringer and get stung in the end. Now with all of that out of the way, let's continue with the video. Your watch item is next on the block. I thought this 2016 McLaren 650S would have been the perfect project. I had it in my watch list for 10 days prior to the auction day and it turned out to be a marathon of a bidding process. And let's just say it didn't go entirely to plan. This is how the bidding went. Oh, again, come on man. So at this stage, I was actually getting a little bit worried. I thought I was gonna win this car and I thought I was gonna win it comfortably, but that nod gave the game away. Now, it went back and forth and as you can see, it's at 49,000 pounds. And then this happened. As soon as the car got to 50 grand, I couldn't bid anymore. And I didn't know what was going on, I could have cried and all I could do is sit back and watch as someone else won the car for 50 grand. Gutted. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. Don't believe this. So guys, you can see that was a complete nightmare for me. I ended up losing out on that car. I called up Copart. Copart told me that all of their accounts have got a 50 grand limit. I wasn't aware. You have to call them up and you have to raise that limit. I raised the limit and you know what? I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. A couple of days later, I saw this bad boy. I hit that bid. I won the bid. I'm about to go pick it up, but I'm going to give you a massive clue. Check out this advert that came out back in 2014. And ever since this advert came out, I knew I wanted to get my hands on one of these cars. Check it out. When this advert came out back in 2014, I'm sure, just like a lot of you guys, I was completely blown away. And I had a healthy infatuation with this car ever since. This advert was so simple yet so effective and it captured the entire essence of this vehicle. Just listen to that. Why tell you about a car where we can show you a car, where we can let you feel a car, where we can let you experience this car. And this really hit home for me. I was hooked on this car ever since. And now it's finally time to do something about it. Thank <laughs> you. 
So guys, you've seen that advert. I guess you know what car it is. We've only went and got a 2018 Audi R8 on the channel and whilst you were watching that I made my way down to Copa over in Essex it's about 50 miles away and I've got a phone call coming in right now hold on hello that's my recovery driver I made it here before he did in the little GTI I'm gonna hop into his truck so I can go into the yard hopefully try to get some shots of them bringing out my first supercar on salvage station and you lot are here for it I got my guy Dex with me one, one, Dex. One, one, G. Yeah, we got first supercar. Salvage Nation. Exactly. To the world. Look, look at the quality on these new hoodies. They're so sick. If you want to support the channel, head over to shopsalvagenation.com. Purchase something. But enough of that. Let's go get our car. So we got into the yard at Copa at around 3 p.m. That was our time slot. After getting my high-vis jacket, have a look at this. The car is actually covered out and... There was just this feeling like, oh my God, I, I really cannot believe this is actually happening. But with your support, tons of hard work, we are here, three years in the making. When I started this channel, I knew I was going to be here because I fully, fully believe in what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, they're loading up the car on the dreaded forklifts and I was there to make sure they caused no further damage in previous bills they have. But this one, they were all good. We got a R8, baby. Yeah, buddy. So with the car loaded up, there was a guy that was actually a subscriber. Like everywhere I go, I'm meeting my subscribers and I love it. Guys, we outside. <laughs> on the day, I was so excited and come on, forgive me. I think I've got all reason to be excited. So with the car loaded up, it was finally time to head off and get back to the garage. And believe me, the excitement continued all the way home. Woohoo! Guys, look at that thing. She's a beaut, she's a beaut. I can't wait to get back to the garage and show you this thing in full detail. Look at that rear end. But this rear end is different to any other rear end I've ever worked on. This is a real rear end. So after about two hours with all the evening traffic coming down from Essex, we finally made it back to the garage. And as you can see here, this is just a beautiful sight. We have actually got an Audi R8 pulling up to Eagle's garage. Mad, mad, mad. However, this was going to be the start of my latest nightmare. I do love a nightmare, don't I? As we started to unload the car, we realized that the emergency brake, handbrake, that was engaged, the keys weren't working. Um, I went ahead and I made sure I connected up the battery and yeah, I'm gonna, this proved pretty difficult. After about half an hour, we came up with a solution just to get the car off the truck. Have a look here. So there we go, finally the car is on the floor and <laughs> a massive sigh of relief. But this is our new supercar build, it's a 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus Spider. And this car, oh, it's so beautiful, so, so beautiful. Oh, 
All right, guys, so just made it back. As you can see, this is where the headache is gonna start on this build. Now, first thing, as you can see from the videos, there is no damage to the exterior of the car. However, check this out. The inside of this car has been completely ripped apart. There's so many broken wires, so many broken connectors. And the reason for that is because this car was stolen, recovered. If you look right here, this is the fingerprint kind of dust that the police use. So on the key, it actually says, stolen, recovered, return to SN, I'm assuming that's South End Audi. So it's got two keys, but I think that the first issue that I can see is have a look at this is the security light this normally flashes only when the car is locked and i'm getting no juice now the light is flashing when i press the button the rear indicators flash but i'm getting no juice in the car now it could be that when it was stolen um the would-be robbers reprogrammed the set of keys and deleted these keys and these keys are probably from the previous owner who went through the insurance etc etc and that's how it ended up on copart so that could be one issue or that's one theory or it could be that the receiver for the keys or the receiver for the central locking is disconnected cut broken so i'm gonna have a little ravel through and yeah <laughs> this is going to be the beginning of a massive headache for me however it's something that i'm looking forward to so let's go so i've done some digging and i actually found out that our new audi r8 was actually on the news um it was stolen and it was in a container and about to be shipped out the country when the police found it that search also led me to a forum called r8 talk where i found this thread and um, there was a guy who said it was his car and as you can see here audi actually charged 65k to repair this car and the insurance said no and the insurance wrote it off well i'm gonna try to fix this for a lot less than 65k do you think we can do it let's jump into it i heard yeah, something engine light come on speedometer come on so guys i just found a broken wire here as soon as i've touched it i'm getting some sort of life it's better than what it was getting before Wait. okay i thought i was onto something well the horn's working now, that wasn't working before. So guys, with the keys not working, no ignition, we were stuck. So we stayed late and we went ahead and we began the teardown on the rest of the interior. Guys, take a look at that mess. Everything in there is just a complete and utter mess. Still can't get a live ignition, still can't get the buttons to work, still can't get anything to go correct on the car. It's getting quite late. So we're gonna pack up now. I'll come in the morning, hit it again, and hopefully we can get some sort of progress scan. So I'll see you in the morning. All right, you guys, it's the next morning and last night. I went home and I had nightmares about this car. It's plumbed in the middle of the garage. We need to get it moving. We need to get some sort of ignition. We need to get some progress on the car so we can move it in and out. The main issue that I'm having is the electronic brake is stuck on park and the car's not coming out of park as well so it's just completely stuck we had two rollers on the rear wheels it's a quattro but the clutch for the four wheel system is disengaged at the moment we stuck some rollers on the rear wheels we got it off the truck last night you saw all of that but for today i found some more damage have a look we've just come in just noticed this these guys were savages man so this is the footwell trim for this area and in that footwell trim this is the odb diagnostic port they completely just cut it right off. Have a look at that. So what I've just started to do is I'm gonna be stripping this down. Luckily, you can still see the color codes for the little bits of wires that's inside. There you go. You can still see the color codes. So I'm gonna take them out one by one, try to repair it. I've managed to find the corresponding wires. That's what, this is for the ODB. Um, if I can get them kind of connected back up, try to get the car on the diagnostic scanner and try to see exactly what is going on with the systems. There are tons of missing and broken modules, components. Have a look at this one and you know what? It's like a needle in a haystack at the moment. But I'm sure if I take my time, go through it one by one, piece by piece, we should be able to make some progress today. So it's eight in the morning, let's get to work. So guys, with all the commotion of getting the car delivered, coming down from Copart, I didn't even do a walk around on the car. So I'm gonna do a quick walk around and then I'll get started on those wires. But have a look. The first thing that you can see is, you can see that 
partial engine bay here everything is all good i was kind of you know what i was a little bit worried like what if the engine is missing but i can clearly see the engine in there um and i can't wait to hear this thing start up but it has got carbon everywhere whoever bought this car and spec this car out from the dealers they did not mess about so have a look it's got this carbon lip if I close this rear panel, it's got carbon everywhere. You can see that they've gone for the carbon package. That's probably about 30 grand on top of the cost of the car. It's got this rear carbon lip. You definitely don't want to cause any damage to that. Now, have a look at the brakes. I believe these are ceramic brakes, carbon ceramics. Have, that is literally about another 20 grand option. This scoop here, carbon. Mirror covers, carbon. Coming around to the front, it's got another carbon lip here, but it has some damage on it. It came like that. I will be trying to remove this and I will try to take it down to see if I can get this repaired because this carbon lip, this is all OEM and I would like to keep this car complete OEM. Have a look at the paintwork. It's got a pearlescent paint right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it literally looks amazing. There's no damage on the exterior of the car, and that's why I bought it. Now have a look here. Fire risk, battery disconnected. Now it's a fire risk because it's got a lot of ends of positive and negatives kind of just exposed. If they touch, it could cause a fire. So when we left last night, I disconnected the battery again. Um, once we start to go through everything, then we can sort out all of those broken wires. Have a look at all of this. Even in the door stills, I'm just noticing all of this as I go around. Carbon hair, side skirts, carbon. Oh my God, have a look inside. More carbon right there. Look at this top section, more carbon, like carbon. I am actually happy with what I'm seeing. Even though it is a headache, even though it is a mess. And this is gonna be by far my most challenging build. It's got the Bang & Olufsen audio. Have a look at that, Bang & Olufsen. I wanna hear that fired up, I wanna hear that working. And obviously, you've got that soft top. Hopefully we can get this soft top working. Hopefully everything goes to plan. Have a look at this carbon fiber, and it's got the R8 kind of engraved in that fuel cap. Very happy with all of that. If only we can get the car working. So that is the point of the rest of this video, trying to get some sort of progress on running this car. Now it's time to try to fix this ODB port. We're dealing with very tiny pins, very tiny wires, but I took my time one by one and I soldered up color to color and I matched everything back up, sealed it all up and I popped them back into the corresponding holes on the plastic connector. Alright you guys, so the first step that I've taken is we need to get the diagnostic port working again and painstakingly one by one dex turn it to the back. As you can see, I've gone ahead and I've repaired each pin, I've popped it back into the correct hole that it's come out of and hopefully we can get some sort of communication. This is super important, this is the only way for me to communicate with the car via my diagnostic tool so that I can actually find out what is going on with all the different modules and hopefully it's just in some sort of security lockdown. So let's get the diagnostic tool and see if we've got communication. So this is a very important step. Without this working, we can't do anything. But as soon as I plugged it in, you can see my diagnostic receiver, it lit up and I made contact with the car. Now, we wanted a bit more room to work, so my guy Dex went ahead and removed both front seats, but have a look at these seats. These are bucket seats and they look amazing. Alrighty guys, so I've removed all the seats. We found some broken wires there. We repaired it on this little module here. Found some, found this module in the back, plugged it in. Found some more broken wires over there, plugged it in. And like I showed you, I repaired this connector. Now, as you can see that light is flashing and I'm happy to announce that I've got communication with the car. So as you can see, it's just got tons and tons and tons of codes because everything was just cut and ripped out of this car, gutted out. Um, so I'm gonna go through all of these codes, see what's going on, clear some of them, whatever's gonna be remaining, then we can start to work through those. But this is a good step in the right direction. So I'll catch up with you and I'll let you know what the diagnostic is saying. So guys, we found good news and we found bad news. So I'll start with the good news, like for example, engine electronics, everything's all good, but because of all the damaged wires and stuff, there's just a lot of missing communication. So Databus is missing a message. 
data bus missing message. It's just a lot of missing information. But this is the one that I'm concerned about. Access start authorization, no communication. And then um, the data bus ODB interface has lost communication with the body control module. Body control module is very important. It controls everything in the body. So the keys, unlocking the car, locking the car, starting up the ignition, everything is dependent on the body control module. And I've got no communication. So let me dig around a little bit more in all of this mess and see what I can come up with. So guys, at this point, I'm dealing with the unknown. I decided to just go through the car. I'm looking for any broken wires and there are tons of them. And whatever I can repair, I'm repairing. I just restored power to the infotainment system. And as you saw, the Maps DVD came out. I popped it back in. I went into the front. There was tons of stuff ripped out the front as well. I refitted everything and I'm literally just going through the car and looking for any damage so I can repair it. After finding no broken wires in the front, I went ahead and removed the carpet because there was some water in the base. So we removed the carpet and here's my guy Dex just wiping up all that water. This actually got me a bit more worried. I was thinking, was it flooded? Like, why is there so much water? When I had to remove the center console, once again, more broken wires. Have a look at this part, broken, that's the armrest. This car was destined for an overseas buyer, I'm assuming, and the people who stole the car, they didn't care. They just ripped everything to bits. Now with the center console removed, this gave me access to this little drawstring, which will disengage park. And now that I was able to connect my diagnostic tool to the car, I was able to use a program in there to disengage the emergency brake also. So this is all important because I can finally roll the car around the garage. This is the hood for the cockpit and they completely ripped the leather trim off the top and broke it. So I removed what was left of that leather trim and I'm gonna to have to order a new one. So guys, it's been about, I don't even know how many hours has gone. Um, we started at eight this morning, it's now almost 4 p.m. Whew, yeah, a lot of time's gone. We haven't really made that much progress. Merry Christmas to me. Merry Christmas to me. This one is gonna be very challenging. Um, we managed to get the car into neutral. I've just removed the jacks, just removed the rollers. That way we can maneuver it into a parking spot that's not gonna block the entire garage. Once we get all of that sorted, um, I've got an Audi specialist coming down. We're gonna try to get it on the computer. Now that it's actually making communication, hopefully it might need coding. I don't know, we don't know the history of the car. If anyone has any ideas, let me know in the comments. But yeah, I'll, I'll give you an update in a bit. So guys, it's actually a couple of days later and a lot has gone on. We went ahead and completely stripped down this car. We're looking for the immobilizer and I found it. However, when the car was stolen, it looks like they've just yanked it out. And one of my theories is, because they've yanked it out, the wire that cuts ignition and cuts the start-in procedure, it's just loose. It's just there. It's not receiving the signal from the immobilizer because it was yanked out. And the car is in some sort of lockdown mode. Now, it's actually two days before Christmas, and all I want for Christmas is you. I want to see if we can get this car started before Christmas. Yet again, we spent so many hours on this car. I love a challenge, and I thought this was going to be a piece of cake, but this is actually turning out to be a nightmare before Christmas. But hopefully we can sort it out. Yet another day, let's roll on. So like my hoodie says, I'm trying to keep it moving, so I went in with fresh energy and I'm checking all the fuse boxes, I'm checking all the fuse wires and I'm actually going through the entire wiring loom looking for that broken wire. Now my biggest problem is I don't know where the immobilizer was fitted, I just found it on the floor. So I'm peeling back several layers of wiring looms and I'm looking for something but I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. I ended up calling a locksmith I wanted to double check if the keys actually were registered to the vehicle. He came down, did several tests, and he tried, and this is how we got on. Um, 
then this side is ground. Is it getting ground, yeah? Yeah, look, it goes green, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, with all the other connectors connected in, when you touch this onto the middle, it's got power coming out of the module. Yeah. And, and got ground, ground. Coming out Right. There might be some more, but obviously I haven't got a diagram, innit? Yeah. Right, but I'm saying I can make the major ones. Ground. Round. Yeah, but that's the input side, no? If the other one's the output side. So it's the third day on the R8, and uh, this thing is headache, headache, headache. I've got another guy that's come down. We're tugging, we're pulling, we're probing, we're trying. I wanted this to be an R8 Christmas. Have a look. 9 p.m. Started at 8 for the third day in a row. Trying to keep it moving, but. Yeah, this is my last hope. He's a specialist, he's really good. He's the same guy that did the RS4 calibration. Top, top, top. Let's see what can happen. So at 10 p.m. I've got another mate. He's an Audi specialist. He actually worked on some previous builds for me. He came down to see and try to help after his shift. And we're pulling a late night here. He's going through all the wiring as well. He's going through everything, but he's got dealer level software. So hopefully we can make some leeway and try to get this R8 started, man. So unlike other diagnostic tools, his dealer level software was able to make some sort of connection and this is what happened. Alarm immobilizer and all that stuff. All of them different things are controlled yeah. by that. See what it says, starter entry, mm -hmm. component protection, immobilizer. Without the immobilizer, can't get in. Yeah. So guys, it's taken three days. Have a look. It's 22, 26. Half 10. It's been a long day, but this is the problem. Convenience access module. Ripped out everything, literally. Um, but yeah, we needed dealer level software to get to the bottom of it. I'm gonna go out now and try to source one of these. So it looks like it's not gonna be an R8 Christmas. This is not gonna be an R8 Christmas. Alrighty guys, so it looks like the robbers went ahead and tried to swap this bad boy out and in the process they bricked it because there's no information being read by the computer and my guy here has got some dealer level software he was able to get in and it actually says that the VIN number in this unit is different to the other units in the car and for that reason it doesn't pass the start authorization also so that is another reason so yeah there's <laughs> there's a lot going on here as you can see the car is an absolute mess can we sort it stay tuned to see how we get on with it if you're watching this you're not subscribed subscribe to the channel if you've liked this episode press the like button don't forget to go buy some tickets for the raffle it's Christmas tomorrow I hope all of you guys have a lovely Christmas from everyone here at Salvage Nation and as we draw closer to the end of 2023 I want to thank all of you guys for supporting and following Salvage Nation I'm gonna do a video on my 2023 year and you guys are gonna be surprised like 2023 was a crazy crazy year and it's not in a good way it's crazy crazy if I tell you all the things that are going on in the background and I'm still putting out content for you lot. So make sure you like and subscribe, man. Like I put in a lot of work and I wanna keep going. 2024, here we come. R8 plus more. Keep it locked. Have a nice Christmas. We out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, why don't you check out one of my previous videos on the left. There's plenty in the playlist. And if you wanna know more about the Salvage game, why don't you become a member of Salvage Nation and I'll be there to guide you along the way. And don't forget, you can follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram if you wanna get an inside scoop before YouTube.